Hi, Rob Eubanks here, Director of Media for the Therapeutic Speakeasy. We're very excited to bring you a follow-up to a video posted called Virtual Reality and Implications for Psychotherapy. In this video, we gathered four colleagues from various areas of specialization and had them experience several virtual reality videos and environments using an Oculus Rift. After each experience the virtual reality system, we asked them to discuss their experience, possible applications to their areas of specialization, as well as risks and benefits associated with this type of tool. So sit back and enjoy as we delve into what is likely to become one of the most powerful tools we will have as therapists. Enjoy. Uh, ever since childhood, I've had a water phobia. And I like playing in the water, and I live near the ocean. I surf, and had a lot of panic attacks and anxiety. Um, so it it felt pretty organic, genetic kind of thing. And um, I bought a game which had an underwater experience, and immediately just ripped it off. It really triggered mm -hmm. like a primary emotion. And and as y'all saw that, I mean, it's a pretty real experience. <laughs> And so I talked to a couple of colleagues and we actually put a behavioral plan together and I could hit pause in the game. And so every night, I, and it was really interesting because every day during the day I was like, this is silly, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And then as I approached it, there was like a very real deep fear. And it, it took maybe two weeks. Um, but after that, I was fine in that experience and I really feel like I could go take a scuba diving class or mm. something like that now. Mm -hmm. Just working through the anxiety journaling about it and, and, and the ability to pause and control the experience mm -hmm. was huge in that. Mm -hmm. So that's what this kind of allowed. You said two weeks and that just sort of like, what, two weeks? Yeah. From something that had been a thing your whole life? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, more than anything, you know, the anxiety, I was able to do it on my terms, which was really nice. And actually one of those triggers, you could just hit it and it would pause. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you know, and I actually kept track of duration. So the first day really was three seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I practiced deep breathing techniques mm -hmm. and then practiced pausing and fighting through it. And, you know, there were a couple PTSD techniques that I kind of used um, through the process. And yeah, it was, it was really helpful. And it got to the point where I could Go do scuba diving. In the I game. mean, how liberate! Look at your face. How liberating, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't. I was prepared for the visual mm -hmm. feast, but I didn't. I didn't. Ex I didn't expect the emotions that came with that. Like that woman in the front of the boat. I mm -hmm. felt like she was taking. Like there was an emotion attached to it. And I'm waving to the kids on the side. You know. Yeah. So it was the emotional piece I didn't expect. I was blown away by the visual piece, mm -hmm. uh, but that emotional piece was really cool. Mm -hmm. 
not all of But there was this visceral, you said your heart was beating uh, when you... This is a very different reaction for me on this. Yeah. Um, um, with the first one, I, the earth was beautiful and it was very calming. I actually had a headache and then my headache mm. actually started subsiding with that one. But when some of the images came up, my heart rate increased mm. um, in the first one. The second one, I felt very out of control. Um, not just that there was no help around, you know, in regard to this is coming at you. And um, it's kind of the theme with all of mine. And then the last one, looking mm. down, I can't control this. I can't move. It's interesting that the first video, when it showed space, mm -hmm. um, I love space. And the concept of it, when you look down and it was just kept going on and on and on, infinity, mm -hmm. was not, a, a, it was it was fascinating more than a, than a, a a fear based. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the last video, being on the rock climb, looking down and being fascinated by it, because I knew it wasn't really there, but it just fascinated that I didn't have a fear of the height. Mm. Now, if you'd have put me in a box somewhere, that would have been a different thing. Oh, I would have chosen the box or the box. <laughs> I would have to. Because yeah. the other ones that I wanted to touch, I wanted to touch the lady and the dinosaur yeah. and the whatever, and the cyborg, I wanted to, like, shoot my own gun, and yeah. I wanted to mm -hmm. feel the heat yeah, of the I fire. Yeah. Control but of let me get in this mm -hmm. and do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but uh, when I had to actually interact, I was like, no, yeah. I, can't, <laughs> I can't do it. The second video raised in me a f that fight or flight and just like dodge and weave the debris mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I wanted, you know, it's like I thought about, about Laura Croft Tomb Raider and yeah. the cyborg thing. I was thinking, I want to do that. Exactly. <laughs> I think it, I was Laura Croft for just about two minutes yeah. in there and I was like, rock on. Yeah, it raises different things. It, it That fight or flight response, I didn't have the flight so much except maybe from the debris, mm. um, but just not running away from it, almost really a little bit of fascination with it. The first video was more of a calming mm. sensation yeah. with the lady in the boat. I felt calm with the family, with yeah. the boat, with the, with the earth, with the cloud. Like the images, of they, they did not seem pleasant to me, the fire. Mm -hmm. The second one was very um, anxiety provoking for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fight or flight, it was really yeah. high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So I think the last one, I, it felt, I, looking down, I didn't think I'd have the reaction I did at feeling. You know, this is, mm -hmm. you know, even though you have this headset on, it feels very real. Very that this real. is in your very real incredible. experience for you to yeah. have. That was kind of the shocking thing, um, was my unconscious buys this experience. Mm -hmm. It's buying it. I'm yeah, ducking and I'm leaning and I'm, and I'm, yeah. Because so. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I felt my heart rate going up, my hands are cold, you know, oof, you know, I just, mm -hmm. you know. And the abandonment of it, like, okay, I'm done. I can just abandon this now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like you were saying, though, you you had a stop button, mm -hmm. and and we all at well, you and I asked, uh, yeah. can we stop this at any point? Right. Yeah. And finally, I was like, dude, you gotta take this, you gotta take yeah, this off. Like, I can't awesome. do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so was was that was it like that for you when you were doing the water stuff? Oh yeah, I it, when I first started, I I couldn't even keep it on. I, it was similar mm -hmm. to your experience with the heights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just my I was buying the experience so deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wonder, did you have people around you to support you? When you mm. had that, it was just you in that experience. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. I wondered yeah. about that because, you know, thinking about are there others that help you as you're getting exposed to this intense situation? Would have been nice. Yeah. And volume. I mean, that's yeah. the other thing is the sound is a 360 sound, and that's a pretty big factor, oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And can yeah, you I had to turn mine off for a second for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and can you imagine if they, if they build in then feet like heat? If it, we oh, could have felt the heat the of that fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thinking when you said that you did it by yourself, and I'm thinking I work with kids, wow, we would have to have mm -hmm. a team of people mm -hmm. to prepare the kid, not mm -hmm. to mention parent permission. Right. <laughs> but we'd have, to, we'd have to have so much stuff in place because we're working with minors. And the potential is awesome, but the potential that way is scary mm -hmm. for me thinking about mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. The first video, what came up for me in reflecting on the images and the experiences that you went, that we all went through, going through each scene, I, I, I've often had couples, you know, busy with life, with children, activities, jobs, that they don't carve out time together in doing some kind of something together, and and that seemed like a nice way to kind of explore maybe another country or explore an experience. I thought the lady in the boat maybe, you know, do something if they're both athletic, mm. canoeing or kayaking oh, or something like that. Oh, do it like together. Yeah, yeah, doing it together. Yeah. Oh, that's a neat, that's a neat mm 
mm-hmm. want to focus on it. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I work with um, individuals with trauma, and my my first thought was, you really have to prepare somebody for this. I think about like the subjective unit of discomfort scales and where they are with like exposure to this actual um, trigger for them, and they're varied for every individual. Um, so I see that aspect of it would have to be very slow to get them to get to that point. Like you said, of I'm under the water and I feel like I'm breathing, I'm moving through it. So a lot of preparation. But I could see that there could be a slow exposure of how much time that you could put and stay on. Even if they had to start with somebody safe with them, then nobody's in the room. And then it can go as slow as it needs to go. Mm. But the exposure to it, I could see how impactful it could be definitely mm-hmm. for trauma yeah I mean trauma time. comes in every shape and size though yeah. can you think of, of some that would be like oh yeah no this would really be mm-hmm. be okay but this trauma I think is maybe yeah I mean I was thinking about with the second one the veterans um, that would be very difficult that mm-hmm. might be the like the last one they would do to get mm-hmm. exposed to that mm-hmm. it would have to be something like a busy street probably starting something that would the stimulus is too mm-hmm. much something mm-hmm. that they're walking through and it's mm-hmm. just busy and Mm-hmm. And then different levels of the videos, a type of virtual reality that they're exposed to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was one veteran that I worked with that, you know, even a paper bag on the side of the road mm-hmm. would trigger. Mm-hmm. And look yeah. at what we saw oh, yes. all uh, in the intense. road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very intense. And with kids, with trauma, do you mm-hmm. think about that too? Like they're yeah, I do. And, and I, again, because they're minors, I wouldn't probably use this. For kids with trauma, every, every kid. I mean, we're trauma-informed schools. That's where we're going, yeah, right? Um, yeah. But I, I wouldn't do that. For what I was thinking of um, when the cyborg thing was going on. I mean, imagine if you're in Columbine when the shooting starts. Imagine if you're in Las Vegas and you're down there. Mm-hmm. I know it was not in a school, but if, if you could train school counselors with this virtual mm-hmm. reality, and you're in school and you're just in your office, you hear bombs going oh, off, you hear gunshots idea. going off. And you're running out of your office and you're having to like mm-hmm. step over that kid who's bleeding or that mm-hmm. you bet preventive preparation you bet it'd mm-hmm. be awesome mm-hmm. and i mean i've got more ideas but i'll share those later yeah. mm-hmm. i mean so i i think i would go that route um before i would go trauma with kids that's just my feeling yeah and and before we came here today um dr spencer Stewart had asked me you know think about how you could apply this in terms of couples therapy And I immediately thought about John and Julie Gottman's Love Labs in Seattle Mm. and how might this be an aspect of some offshoot of that and using like like a love lab Mm. for the couple Mm -hmm. and and engaging in some experiments um, with each other, like in a lab on their own. Wow. That'd be cool. Yeah. Be interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, how many kids have test anxiety? So let's say you go in and you've got your little grabber things and you open the test booklet and you see oh, the yeah. test booklet and you pick up and, and to monitor yeah. mm-hmm. the anxiety that yeah. comes mm-hmm. up with the test taking mm-hmm. and the teacher's up there going, five minutes left, yeah. you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, like systematic desensitization, I think about the people I've worked with and, and elevators, airplanes, mm-hmm. you know, all of the mm-hmm. things that they're trying to slowly get them exposed to you know, their biggest fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can just, and it's not even a trauma yet. It's an right. imagined thing that yeah. this is going to really impact me. I can't handle it. I can't stand it. I want to escape it. Mm-hmm. So sitting in that versus avoiding, accepting it, and being able to help them live, you know, have a life worth living, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, whatever that may look like. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that was exciting for me was, oh, my unconscious buys this mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. So I can control in a, in a safe environment, anything that's kind of eyes and ears based, mm-hmm. have my emotions replicate that. And it's like, well, that's a lot of the work we do in the end, right. managing mm-hmm. emotions. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Science versus counselor, like how you would use this, I think is a, it could be a great counselor education tool mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. use, you know, when you're, even when you're doing just like field work, um, helping to train them and the experience of a diagnosis, the experience of something like they did with, you know, for a while they did like schizophrenia, they put the headphones on and, and they would want you to experience what they experience. I think that's a really cool way to do it. Distance counseling, um, mm-hmm. that, that one kind of stepped in my mind and it was kind of, yeah. oh, you can replicate an office experience potentially, particularly with augmented reality. 
And so you can see a specialist on the other side of the country and actually right. be working with them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think with how, with how dispersed our global society is and the sort of isolation that happens, mm -hmm. more people are going to be drawn to this kind of thing, to have experiences without having to go out and do it. Um, and so I can see that being uh, a plus, for, uh, a draw for yeah. people, mm -hmm. I think. Well, cost effectiveness, mm -hmm. I was thinking too for treatment, for not only um, thinking about trainees or teaching them about something through this virtual reality or augmented reality, but cost effectiveness for clients. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's why they're drawn to distance counseling too, and the, the availability and the time and you know, mm -hmm. to be able to come to an office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. And I go to, without being able to cite anything at this point, but thinking about where we might want to need some parameters uh, around okay. this in terms of doing no harm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Ethically, legally. It would be, have to be, have a very clear informed consent with right. people and really explain this process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the pros and cons. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say there's all this benefit without the risk, but there's, there's risk. Some <laughs> risk, yeah, as always. There's yeah. risk, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. I think the ethical codes have been pretty good about being forward thinking about technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't read anything about this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, there is a whole distance counseling, you know, informed consent and ethics process. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I mean, I just think kids live in, in this kind of world already, at least on the periphery. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, I think, you know, my parents would not want to have anything to do with this. So I think generationally, but anybody that's coming up now, um, it's, that this, it's gonna yeah. be yes. part of what they, yeah resonate with. Another exciting thing, um, there are so many experiences already, just from video to uh, we're doing documentary and news footage, and you know, the immersion is just different, and the way that they film it is really different. Mm. In other words, there's no close-ups and there's no focusing on people, you're focusing on an environment. Mm. So I, I just think there's probably a lot of potential for dis diversity training. I was just thinking Prescribing that. diversity yeah. situations. Yeah. To go, hey, give, me an you yeah, give me an example. Well, I if somebody is, um, you know, let's say somebody has a problem with a particular population, yeah. you can prescribe an experience. Mm -hmm. Drop them in the middle of that. Think about and that have them sit video. down with that kind yeah. of family and go, God. hey, these are people too. Yeah, working through values and bias yeah. and all that. Oh, that oh, family so in the I first video, that. for example, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly. Yeah, go have dinner with that family in that right in that round, mm -hmm. wow. or walk through the halls of a prison. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Feel that door close behind you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Well, I, again, sorry. I go back to kids, <laughs> but like this, you know. Um, what are they? Scared straight kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I do know. That would like, be incredible. I was thinking just a, as a general thing, too. I think of my children who are growing up in an age where social and human contact is, is very limited, mm -hmm. and knowing how to communicate effectively. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. the potential for having, you know, conversation simulations, how do you engage? Skills I mean, building, there's practice, oh you gosh, coping skills, and. You know, it's really, it, it would model, I don't know if this makes sense, like an educational platform of this is how, you know, families interact. Exactly. <laughs> this is a way a family yeah. can interact yeah. because it's very different. You have mm -hmm. to, parents have to kind of limit some things now because now everything's digital, mm -hmm. texting, you know, video games. Okay. Well, Facebook bought this company. They see this yeah. as, a, as a people platform and yeah. there's already places where you can have an avatar and go hang out with people all over the world. And so there's this one room with all these crazy things in it, and you can go and pick them up and go interact, and you can talk to each other. Mm. Um, there's one where you can go play Frisbee golf with people. And so there's already hangouts. Wow. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's one where there's you know, one of those big mazes um, uh -huh. that's like ivy or whatever, and you have to walk through the maze, and there's a whole bunch of other people getting <laughs> lost. And say, what's this way? And so it's I really interesting. Like, you bring up a great point because, like, uh, looking at gaming in general is now it's virtual like my son will log in and there's people all over the world all in the, world. the same game mm -hmm. and they're working as a team mm -hmm. it's a really
cool thing. Like, you know, they're working together, and he's like, he's talking to them, you know, and he really has met people that way. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's a negative thing. It can be a negative thing if it's not monitored. Right. But okay. I, he has friends from in London and in Germany um, wow. that he talks to outside of the game. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily, oh, they're just in the game and there's no mm -hmm. benefit. Mm -hmm. You actually can pull and, and pull and talk to people through Skype, he does, through mm -hmm. Skype and different mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Pros and cons, of course. But. Yeah, again, I, I keep going to the, uh, I worked with a kid in a school who, who gamed probably 20 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And he gained with his dad. It was a family thing, and it was their bonding time, and he was really good at it. He got his sense of identity as yeah. that versus, mm -hmm. like, a kid in reality. Mm -hmm. And um, so, that's, you know, it's, we just have to think of that other yeah, side, I think. Yeah, the you bet. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is kind of interesting also. This is going to be avatar-based, okay. meaning you get to create whatever you want to be. And so you get to enter the world mm -hmm. as whatever you created. And so, um, Wonder Woman, yes. Gal Gadot, <laughs> right? Nice. And 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 that's what you get to present oh. as in a world where your body identifies <coughs> it. And so, you know, I think there's a bunch of potential to um, do things you wouldn't do in the real world, but your body buys the experience of having done it mm. and being something different. Mm -hmm. So, pros and cons, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what what about the like disabilities? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh yeah. well. Right? Yeah. I was thinking about, I work a lot with the, in my area, you know, rural and poor, and, and there's a lot that don't get to ever leave their experience. They mm -hmm. don't have the finances, mm -hmm. they don't get to go anywhere or do anything. They've never been on a plane, they've never traveled. This would take them mm -hmm. to another, rea a, a different experience to even get exposed to diversity, mm -hmm. which they never, they wouldn't be able to, really. Well, Google Earth went, and, and or Google turned Google Earth into a platform. And so you take those and you actually fly oh, anywhere yes. on the earth, visit any city. And um, so every night I kind of go visit a new city. And you can <laughs> oh, go about 30 nice. feet above anything you want anywhere in the world yeah. on top of any mountain. So it's, it's really interesting. It does make the world reachable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because when, when I think about couples and their, you know, when they have bids for connection with one another, as John Gottman talks about, you know, there, there are negative ways that we push, you know, couples push, push each other away and they don't realize it in their dialogue and, you know, but they sent, certainly get the reaction from it. But, you know, bids for connection, they can do that like with travels or with teamwork and doing things, mm -hmm. but also even sex therapy, mm -hmm. having that component bring in as well. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about ways that they can utilize that as a way to come together and connect um, or even work through you know, ways or forms of communication. In a safer way. In a safer push way. push the stop button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They learn how to regulate those emotions. Yeah. If they get, you know, too elevated, they're not thinking rationally, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they can, they can yeah. time out, yep. take a pause. Yep. I just think about the global nature of it, though. You know, there's some that don't need education on it. They don't understand it. They don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. And so they don't understand how to, you know, they would really have to understand the piece of how do I do this? What does this mean? And would it be reality versus non-reality? Yeah. And being able to link yeah. it in the real world and and relationally, how we relate to one another. Mm -hmm. um, Helping because them make we aren't sense relatable. of it. You know, a lot of, around the world, I don't know, I've been finding it more and more, people are doing companion therapy, or finding, they mm. can seek out a companion because they don't have one, but if they had an avatar, mm -hmm. they might feel connected. But will that disconnect them from society, you know? Mm -hmm. um, even more. Can you think reality get boring. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Can't you think okay. of some people that would rather live in, live in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, those who are reality. Yeah. addicted to pornography, for example. Mm. Ooh, I haven't even brought that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole. That, oh, wow. that well, is we got both ends. Major. We can do training for people who are having that's problems. That's the education. Right. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah. I think you touched on it earlier about. Accessibility, you know, in certain areas. Yeah, that's of the a country. con. I mean, that's like mm -hmm. who is accessible to it when, when you think about finance. I always go there because I've had to do a lot mm -hmm. of pro bono work and had to do sliding fee mm -hmm. scales, you know, because yep. I live in an area where it's poor, yeah. and so I think the accessibility to it and being able, but it could be a great opportunity that if you purchase this equipment or use it, you could then do some work that can make it a pro, but just expanding, like third world countries don't know a lot about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and yet they're in need of help, yep. you know, mm -hmm. as well. 
I want to go back to something you said about your, my unconscious bought it, mm -hmm. that it was a real experience. And that's the part I think I'm having a hard time grabbing because yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining people doing this and getting so jazzed about it and then coming back and realizing, like, that that wasn't real. This is my reality. Yeah. And it sucks. And does that create yeah. the, either the need to go, is like an addiction, mm -hmm. right? Discord. I need more. I, I spent an hour oh, traveling it, right? the world, mm -hmm. and now I need to spend two hours traveling the world because I don't want to come back to my reality. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing to look at for cons. Like, it's a mm -hmm. pro con. I definitely. Um, yeah, is that adrenaline? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Adrenaline. Is it going to like feed this that you don't want to feed? <laughs> so I can create an avatar that looks how I want to look. Yeah. I can be anywhere I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that going to do to, to reality? My, my, reality? My reality sucks, so <laughs> I don't want to be a part of it anymore. Well, yeah. and a lot of the data comes back and sort of says that, that Facebook actually decreases happiness mm -hmm. because you catch the best 2% of other people's lives. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Think that that's real. How is that going to sit well with a mindfulness approach? Yeah, that would be a question. question. Mm -hmm. They have good yeah. apps. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. meditation <laughs> apps. That oh, I use really a meditation app. I yeah. absolutely do that. Um, and, and you can walk around in all these serene places, and you know you can be mm -hmm. in Tibet, and there's guided meditation mm -hmm. as you're there. The trees are actually moving. It's really, Ooh. really interesting. So what do you think? A lot to wrap your head around, right? Staying on the cutting edge of our field is a responsibility that we all hold. Exciting new developments like the virtual reality system promise a greater range of effective treatments as well as exciting and engaging approaches for us to learn as clinicians. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. We'll continue to bring you more installments like this on topics applicable to our field, such as virtual reality. You'll also find other videos already posted on our YouTube channel of interviews with leaders in our field. If there are specific topics that you would like us to address or people that you'd like us to interview, please let us know. For the Therapeutic Speakeasy, I'm Rob Eubanks. Cheers. Did I slip? No, Did I trip cause I know I fell All I know is I wake up here in my clothes tomorrow